crack open a LaCroix with your boy, ladies and gentlemen, the good sir night here to do another fun review. Coconut's the best, by the way. Don't worry about what those naysayers have to say out there. Greetings everyone, the good tonight here today with a rather special review, particularly in the, uh, the vein of 2020, being uh, nothing but pandemics and nightmares all year long. So today, we're taking a look at the Opscore Gentix Soder, the Special Operations Tactical Respirator. So, you'll notice that this looks very much like a gas mask, but it's not. It is a lower face mask respirator. Several key differences <coughs> we're going to be covering here today. So. Love interesting things. Most important, we've got our P100 filter here, and everything else is mostly tactical out in what looks to be a very much modified fodder pilot oxygen mask, which is where a lot of the inspiration comes. The uh, buckles and the uh, a lot of the stuff here all comes from 60s, 70s tech fighter pilot technology. These uh, four class buckles will be getting into those, but yeah, lots of cool stuff, but now modified for use by ground forces. And I guess. <clears throat> Even on the uh, flight crews and stuff, where you're going to be experiencing, where you're going to have, uh, what's the thing, exposure to a variety of chemicals and stuff, but not necessarily to the point where you'll be requiring one of these M50 bad boys. So, a few differences, particularly filter, lens covering, and stuff. So, without further ado, let's get started. What is a respirator? Well, a lower face respirator in particular provides a full seal, as opposed to, like, say, the cloth ma cloth mask that everyone is being advised to use during our current pandemic. Um, so yeah, you have a full seal. You put this on your face here, and it gets difficult to hear me, but you're not going to be getting in a ton of air from the outside because the seal kind of, you know, prevents that. Which is a cool thing. The um, silicone setup here is all designed to be incredibly comfortable and ensure it fits a variety of face types, so it is a one-size-fit-all. And um, the respirator uses these filters, which are all rated like a... Uh, I'm sure most people know the N95, not a full seal re uh, respirator in this sense, not a cartridge type, but it is one that uh, provides it's like 95% filtration or something. P100 is supposed to have the uh, smallest micron rating, so you're technically only supposed to really be getting in oxygen and smaller gases. So it doesn't provide gas mask levels of protection because this is a mechanical filter, whereas your gas mask is using more like mechanical, chemical, crazy filters and stuff. I'm not a Seaburn guy. I have kind of like a really baseline understanding of how a lot of this stuff works. There is a guy who occasionally comes into my uh, channel whenever I make videos like this and puts in tons of good educated information and if he happens to do that again today it might be pinned up at the top of the comments. So, B100 filter is basically a really really tight, uh, was it like cardboard looking filter that's designed to catch all those nasty particles and uh, environmental nastiness. Now what's fancy about these, particularly the P100 on these respirators, is that they also protect against oily lubricants and stuff and all, well, burning oil and you know stuff that's bad for your lungs is what you're basically trying to keep out. It does not offer eye protection which is an entirely different beast because you have that really weak barrier on the eyes where you can get all sorts of toxins and stuff in there. It's generally inadvisable. So this is more like a low threat, particularly a training level. Well, you know, training real world operations. There's a lot of things that benefit from the use of a respirator. So if you're out on the big thing that everyone's talking about when it comes to this, outside of the pandemic, of course, is doing lots of indoor uh, training. You have all that lead and lubricant gas and all sorts of nastiness up in the air, especially in indoor poorly vent ventilated ranges. Stuff gets on and into your skin, heavy metals and stuff get into your lungs, and uh, they make life very unpleasant, if not terminated entirely. Bad juju. So this helps prevent all that stuff from getting in your body, that nastiness gets caught up in this particulate filter, and when it gets clogged, you swap it out for a new one, because it's a lot easier to change out this filter than it is to get all that heavy metal out of your respiratory tract. So, good. <clears throat> very good stuff there. Um... The tactical part really comes in from the fact that this is all black, whereas if you've seen like the other 
P100 uh, respirators and stuff, they usually got the pads on the side. The pads are giant and pink. The respirator itself is a whitish gray color with bits of black. Not terribly tactical unless you're playing like Fortnite or any sort of competitive battle shooter. But weak link is, this is Earth. Credit to you if you know the quote. So, um, yeah, all black. Uh, always cool. Um, these buckle setups here, like I said, this is the old school um, buckles you'll see in like Vietnam uh, LVs and stuff. But pretty popular. They do, they were generally kind of phased out because they tend to get damaged and nasty, but fortunately these are relatively cheap to replace on this hardness system. Thank God. So, the way this works is you have these four pins. You got two at the bottom and uh, two up at the top. And the way this is set up, even though it has a one point contact here, is that when you're wearing the standalone headband, the bottom part's being pulled up to keep your chin cup in place, and the two on the top are being pulled back to keep the nose cup in place. And that gives you your full seal, which is uh, always a good thing. Um, breathing in this is relatively simple. The P100 filter is very easy to breathe through, although you are gonna still, as with any filter, encounter some resistance, and particularly the uh, getting your voice out and talking to people becomes the real challenge because although breathing is easy, talking not so much. So, one of the key workarounds, if you go super premium ultra platinum like the good Sir Knight does here for everything, there's a little mic port here, and as you'll notice with that mic port, you look over here and there's a little microphone. This plugs into your little Nexus mic plug, and then you plug that into your headset, either amps or sword it, or, not sword it's the uh, Peltors. So you can't do it with sword ends, guys, sorry. Amps and Peltors, you plug that in there, and everything will be Gucci, at least. Pretty sure you can't do it with swordens, to my knowledge. I could be wrong. I haven't had a pair of swordens in a few years now. So, as you can see on the inside with those export valves, those are all orange and stuff, which is why these covers play a big role in keeping that orange subdued. With swapping out the filter, it takes keynotes from the uh, M50, although without the little buttons and stuff, you just give it a little twist and it comes right off. And yeah, now one of the big things that separates this from the M50 is you can still breathe without the filter on. Now, of course, this doesn't have a point because it's the same as wearing no mask at all. For the most part, you're just inhaling stuff directly, so... Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah, P100 equivalent filter. So it's Opscore Zone, custom take on a P100 filter. Same degree of protection, but uh, not the big poofy civilian model is the key takeaway. The microphone is really nice. I particularly like that because staying in touch with the Goon Squad is uh, pretty important. You want those guys to be able to hear you and to communicate with you. So, um, yeah, stay in touch with the group. If you need to clean this at all, by the way, you just use isopropyl 70% rubbing alcohol. Really easy. Take the filter off, clean out the inside, because you're going to get all your nasty breath and spit and saliva, and God forbid you sneeze in this thing, you get to clean it all out. But fortunately, that's it. You just need that. It comes out real easy. So, yeah, let's um, actually get into the fit and... Uh, Aware of all this, we got this currently set up with the O2 harness straps for a Opscore helmet or anything using a arc rail with dovetail attachment. So we're gonna grab our super super sexy boy over here. This is our Opscore Maritime. We're gonna pop. I already got the uh, bits installed over here. We're gonna pop open these giant Mickey Mouse ear amps, and we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna don this boy on our head here. Watch out, just the back end and all that other fun stuff. So, we got that going on. We're going to go ahead. We're going to actually do a run, a little test run on the comms here. So, find the arrow alignment. Uh, where is it on this side? Da, 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 da. This is probably easier to put together before filming, but you know, I don't want to wear a helmet the entire video. Uh, especially when we're going to be switching over to show you guys the other harness here in a bit, too. So, where is. This thing actually might be easier just to get that put up on my ear. Make sure you move that, this piece, before you start getting that all set up. Uh, arrow to, where is it? I'm going to find you. There it is. Yeah, we got our comm set up. Okay, so, almost forgot on that side too. Get our comms pushed up there so we get make sure we're protecting our uh, future cheek weld. Toms are now on. Hearing is fantastic. So before donning the mask, key thing you're going to want to do is actually adjust your chin strap a wee bit. And you're going to want to pull that back here so it doesn't interfere with your uh, chin cup. So you get a proper seal going. So yeah, 
Helmets relatively comfy. We got our tabs ready to go here. Gonna grab your respirator, and the first thing I'd recommend doing is not misplacing your Nexus mic plug. Fortunately, it is in my drawer. So here's your mic plug. It plugs in the same way the mic does, except it also connects to your sorter. So what you're gonna want to do is plug this boy in here real quick, like so. And we're gonna clip this into our left side first. This is all user preference. These things are incredibly modular. And we're gonna take this bit here, and we're gonna make the ever unpleasant faith-based plugging into here. It's over there somewhere. I feel it. It looked like it'd be that hard, but it really is. Is that it? Yeah, there we go. So now we got a proper plug going. And what we do now is we just attach this to the right side. Make sure you get a proper seal underneath the chin so this thing doesn't come flying up into your eyeballs. And there we go. We now have our tactical Gucci set up. Yeah, boy. Oh yeah, we are, we are all set here. So, what you do now is you turn on your comms, because it's kind of difficult to hear me with what's going on, so we reach in our little pocket down here. Comms, oh baby. There we go. We got our comms up and running. We're going to take our other secondary radio. We're going to turn that on. And now what we're going to do is now we're going to set that on the counter. We take a big step back over here. Let's go. So as you can see, it's relatively easy to hear over the radio. And then you also get to hear all that breathing noise from, uh, you know, this uh, thing that people are addicted to called uh, respiration. Kind of a big deal. So really nice to have. And if you don't have it, you die. <laughs> it's just like that. That's it. So that's it. Over. So yeah, this is the radio. It's really much, much easier to hear than trying to scream through the speakers this whole time. Because I have to be very, very loud to make sure you can hear me. Now, as you can see with this large nose piece, one of the big things you're going to want to do is you're going to need to modify whatever sort of goggles or whatever you're using. These ESS ones, because of the way they have the nose piece, it's usually going to be a bit of a tight fit in there, but you can make it work. Oh boy. The recommendation... And what all the cool kids are doing is running the step-in visor. But is that still in the mail? That's a video for another time. So, we got that. We got a filter. As you can see, this is incredibly useful. The way the uh, front-facing filter doesn't cover your export valves here is a big deal, and I'll show you why. What makes this so much more tactical than the uh, civilian model is the ease of which you can integrate it with your weapon system. So you get your weapon here, you turn on your optic, optic's good, and then you just, when you get your natural cheek hold, and you got the uh, sight ready and up and going, what you'll notice is that the mask is not rubbing up against this as you would have with the M50. So that makes aiming down the weapon incredibly easy, even without running a unity riser. So you here, you got your weapon going, and you can do all your normal stuff, and you have full visibility of that reticule. You can adjust your stop as need be, maybe. And I find what helps a lot, especially when running amps and stuff, is to count the weapon slightly to the side to make sure you get that uh, extra space you need. It works for different people of different facial structures. So you can go here, you can be sneaking around, you can be like, if your mic board be like, alright guys, prepare to make entry. Hey, you're prepared. You're ready. It's easy to get on comms and communicate. And everything's really self-concealed and safe. Really, really cool. So, in addition, if you do have to stop the weapon over to your left shoulder, sit out here. You don't have a lot of interference from your comms cable, and you can still get your weapon on site and everything. Make sure everything is Gucci. So, with that all out of the way, Let's say you don't have to wear a helmet. Let's imagine for a second a world in which the helmet was entirely optional. Were such a world to exist, you'd be able to run a simple harness system and maybe adjust your headset or maybe you're just using it for uh, grocery shopping in these unprecedented times. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to pop this out here. We're going to free up our respirator. We're going to pop open our Mickey Mouse ears. Make sure those are out of the way. Free the chin strap. Move the headgear. Definitely going to uh, free that plug right there. That's free. I'm going to return that over there. We're going to leave. This is the hardest part to plug in, so I recommend doing this before ever donning the helmet to do all your cool Gucci stuff. You know, stuff you shouldn't forget, like I do. So we're going to take our helmet, we're going to move that to the side here for a second. And yeah, so we've got everything coming around quite nicely. I'm going to move my port back over here so it's out of the way. Down lead cable. So, next, we want to take this mask. And we don't need to be a cool mech warrior Air Force pilot guy for a second. We're going to do, um, let's say, a lot more calm down, uh, cool training stuff that doesn't require the use of helmets, body armor. All we need to do is throw on some ear pro, our mask, and of course your safety goggles because you shouldn't be uh, shooting without them. I already hear you guys, the ones out there, like, you're not going to have goggles in a reactionary firefight. Well, that's true. Sometimes. In the event that you don't have goggles, you are going to be risking your eyesight. But in a life and death situation, it makes a lot more sense to risk your eyesight at that point than, uh, say, on the range. <laughs> Seems like the range where you should be training to get better is where you should be focused on training and getting better and not exactly how things are going to be and neglecting all your safety features because you lose your eye in uh, training and you're pretty much useless. So, big brain time. So, with the... Uh, Simple little uh, standalone harness we got here. It follows very much simple predicate. Very easy top of the head setup and then the behind the neck setup. So that gets you your two points of contact. So you maintain a comfortable fit. And of course, with this fun, tried and true tested technology, we know that it works with even just the two O2 straps. It's still a very comfortable, easy to maintain fit. So we're gonna strap this boy in here uh, that reattaching to all these buckles. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So the way I like to have this set up is you want to have make sure none of your uh, elastic or velcro or anything's crazy twisted and stupid stuff like that. And all you got to do, and this is really nice when you're running a standalone, is you just put that behind your head. And you've got the world's Gucciest functional yet expensive necklace. Yo, what's up, bling bling? Oh my god, that my editor can make that look good. Throw some sparkles and glitter everywhere, I don't know. Now we've got our respirator without the need of a helmet, although I must say, with your helmet properly kitted to your taste, with the nice pads and everything, it is insanely comfortable to wear for extended periods of time. Now in this setup I got here, I've worn it for six hours tops. And it is gonna get rather unpleasant up on your big schnoz. And let's so if you wear it higher up on the John stuff, that extra contact is going to feel like you've been chewing cereal really hard, really fast. And you're getting like a sore jaw from the mask. From the mask. So, uh, yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to take our mask and you go, oh, I'm going into a dusty, hazardous environment. Or we're going to actually start shooting guns or whatever the hell we're doing today. So we're going to take this piece, throw that over your head real quick. And then all you got to do is it just the strap here while pushing the uh, microphone and stuff into your face. You don't want it too tight and you don't want it too loose. So key things to look for, make sure you're not bending the nose piece. Make sure the seal of the cup is just under your chin to maintain an upward pressure. You don't want everything going straight back. You want a bit of that upward and backward is what you're really looking for. So not too tight on the nose. Make sure your headband's good, and your elastic you can adjust as necessary to get a tighter fit. And of course, the legendary confidence building exercise. <laughs> if you still have a seal, congratulations. <coughs> oh god. That's a cough from something entirely different. I haven't filled the room with asbestos. I just had a cough the last few days, which in 2020 is a very, very bad thing. So, this mask. Had it shown up a wee bit sooner, would have been Gucci. -er. So, that's really all it takes to get this uh, seal going. You got that going, you throw your headset over there, connect it over your ears, and you can go straight back to the pew pew, no problems. And you're still going to get that protection against all your lubricants, your lead, your nastiness. 
and that's my setup. No. And to remove it, you just doff it down there real quick. You take your drink of water or LaCroix. I left my LaCroix in the other room, guys. Assuming I had water. I'm gonna die of dehydration. When you're wearing heavy kits and stuff, uh, heat is the enemy. So make sure you're staying hydrated out there, everyone. So, there you go. Oh, we're getting back to the cool stuff. All right, you grab your Velcro and you put that back on there quick. And as you get a hang for the exact amount of tension you need, this is gonna get a lot faster and a lot easier. Kinda like doing boxing wraps. Takes a lot of practice, but the more you do it, the longer you're wearing them, the uh, easier it becomes to get. And if you go and get it right the first time, every time, 60% of the time. So, that's all there is into getting that all set up. So that's nice, easy peasy. So, mechanical filter. This is going to catch a lot of particulate. It's going to eventually clog up with said particulate, and then you change out the filter. Easy enough. Now, oil, burning oil, all sorts of nastiness like that, gun lead, explosive residue, lots of stuff you're going to encounter in a technical field or potentially breaching walls and doing forced entry and stuff. This is going to give you some pretty solid protection. It is far more low profile and easier to wear than a full-on M50 gas mask. But of course, we've got... I don't think it's paper. They got this crazy whatever filter going on there, P100 filter. I don't know exactly what it's made out of. But it's going to give you some decent protection out there, keep you safe from a lot of threats, and most importantly with comms, keep you in touch with your team. Now, let's compare that to our super fancy smancy M50 gas mask. Now the M50 gas mask already weighs about four times as much, and we got two filters, which makes sure we get really easy breathing on the intake. The outflow is reduced to a single valve up here. And for shooting setups, what you see a lot of people do is they'll pop off this right filter over here. And with that off, you can get a better cheek weld, although there's still a lot of protective, mater protective material over your cheek to take into consideration. But as you can see with this filter, the uh, chemical mixture filter, you do have a similar looking respirator up on the front, but then you've also got the forbidden candy disc. Now the forbidden candy disc here is full of all sorts of well, forbidden candy. Candy so delicious that were you to lick it, you would be hospitalized and potentially die. Hence the title. I bet it tastes really, really good. However, much like Tide Pods, overindulgence in your curiosity can be fatal. So uh, don't. <laughs> Ultimately, do not lick or in any other way consume the forbidden candy disc. Maybe a breath mint. No, definitely. Candy, probably a lot sweeter. They change colors as you get more chemical uh, saturation and stuff going on. That's going to diffuse a lot of the nasty gases and toxic things that are going to be coming into your body trying to kill you. So you do have much better protection, which is why this filter is so much larger. It's got a lot more layers and stuff. I think there's even activated charcoal, which is charcoal that wakes up in the morning and works out. No, it's just really porous, so it absorbs things better. But fitness is important, so... Activate charcoal. You got all sorts of crazy things in here, plus the full seal lens protection, and all that stuff is going to give you far superior protection at a bunch more weight and a lot more unpleasantness. This has to go in its whole little bag and stuff, and you gotta whip that out, throw it on your face, clear it, and bam. So imagine trying to do those same drills, but now you're wearing this big heavy boy up here. It's not going to be as easy, although it is still quite doable. You got to take that filter off. And if you're just doing basic training, you're just doing like rifle drills and stuff, where you're doing some simple breaching and you're not expecting lots of nastiness in the building, then you don't have too much to worry about. Now, I'm not sure how well the M50 protects against asbestos. I'd imagine it does, but the filters are also proprietary and expensive. And as far as protecting you against asbestos and stuff, the P100 filter is proven to do that very well. Now again, hopefully my good gas mask buddy will see this video and come in to give us all nice technical rundown down in the description comments below. And if it does, again, I'll pin it. So if they have any further information you can get from an actual guy with lots of seaburn experience and uh, interest in gas mask far superior to my own. So ultimately, protect your lungs, keep yourself safe, and... <laughs> I guarantee you, at some point in the near future, you're going to see someone take one of these masks off to take a hit of a cigarette, and you're going to really start to 
question where all of humanity went wrong. <laughs> so that's all I really got for you guys. Uh, don't drink lead water, don't drink out of lead pipes, and generally stay safe. And most importantly, when choosing a mask, remember to go for function over form. As stylish as it would be to bust out the old Plague Doctor mask, it's really not going to protect you against as much. And you will also scare all these small children in the area. So, yeah, this, this isn't going to protect you against anything. It's going to look cool as hell, but it's not going to protect you against anything. Although it is far more compact than, well, at least the M50. And you can just take that and you just attach it. Anything, we're just going to put that over our mag right there. Bam. You're ready for, well, you're not really ready for anything. This is just... This is, this is entirely cosplay. If you try to wear that in a real situation, you're going to die. Although, you could probably put cloth underneath those little export holes, and it'll be just as effective as any other cloth mask. So, style points, I guess. But yeah, if you have any crazy questions, or there's anything you want more information on, this will give you a better view of that mic right there. That's just chilling. You can move that around, by the way. Mind you, your face is going to be very, very, very close up in here, and I usually find myself unintentionally kissing the microphone. You're a little smooch, especially when you're on the comms with your homies. They're like, hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a night. You go, I got you, I got you, bro. Good night, homie. Perfectly straight. It's okay, I can prove it with science. So cool stuff. Decently durable. You can wear it for all sorts of cool things. Maybe you can just cosplay and go LARP in your parents' basement. Or run out in the forest. Or generally, in my personal favorite thing, being out here in ye old Japan. It mostly scare locals, especially when like 60% of the local populace has already given up on wearing masks because hey, the virus, it, it, it's gone guys, we don't, we don't need masks anymore. Even though there is, the CDC is kind of a nightmare. I don't want to be working for the CDC right now, they're not really doing much to uphold their credibility. However, in their defense, it is an unprecedented pandemic and the value of masks kind of varies. Maybe it's helpful, maybe it's not. The real question is, are you a team player? Or is it just all about you? Is it about looking cool and being like, yeah, I'm too cool for a mask? Or is it about, hey, I'm doing my part. Maybe it's helpful. Maybe it's helping. Maybe it's not. Only the future will tell, assuming there's a future. There's a good possibility the uh, pandemic just uh, ends humanity and we are replaced by robots, in which case Skynet really has nothing to fight against. And then you'll have robots killing robots. Because there always has to be some form of conflict, because that's just what life is all about. So, <laughs> cheers everyone. Stay uh, optimistic, most importantly. Uh, stay in touch with your friends, fortunately. We do have things like Discord and all that stuff to help us through these trying pandemic times. So, stay in touch with the homies. If you have to, you can drink over the internet. It's socially acceptable. It's not drinking alone. And <laughs> all the other great advice I have for you. And yeah, hopefully this has all been educational. And if nothing else, if you're if you're coming to me and you're like, good tonight, do I need a lower face respirator? I'm going to be like, well, do you even shoot guns, bro? Do you, do you lift? If you can answer yes to both, then yeah, you should probably get one. I mean, even if you're only shooting occasionally, keeping that nastiness out of your lungs is always going to be beneficial. And there's going to be more than enough times where you're going to find a use for this, especially if, uh, say, an Air Force base up in Kadena decides to uh, set a hazmat locker on fire. Then being able to don one of these real quick is gonna offer you some protection against the chlorine. The, I don't know how large chlorine molecules are in comparison to oxygen. I'm gonna assume larger, but I'm not a chemist. I'm not a virologist. I'm not seabird. I'm just a guy with a little bit of information on everything. So again, better than nothing. Although Kadena's never gonna give you money for hospital treatment either way, so. <laughs> So, cheers everyone, stay safe, stay chivalrous, and uh, remember, sometimes, even when you put on the mask, people still don't care. I'm gonna give it to you. No one cared who I was until I put on a mask. And most importantly, for my more uh, old, school old school fans out there, smoking! Alright, I'm done. Cheers everyone, stay safe. <laughs>